Hello there guys, Francis Gray here and today I've got a new monster model to show you all. This is the classic creature the mummy, uh, most famously played by Boris Karloff in the classic uh, black and white Universal Monsters movies. Uh, this uh, model was a styrene plastic kit made by a company called Aurora. Uh, once built it's roughly just under 9 inches tall. So it's a fair size, I'd say it was roughly probably about 1 to 7 scale. Comes in a multitude of parts. The mummy itself, with all these extra bits of uh, of bandage dangling down, uh, comes roughly about 18 parts. Uh, so that's including like two parts for each leg, two parts for each arm, the head's two parts, the torso's two parts, and the rest of them are these uh, hanging bandages. Uh, the base, the base comes as the, the, it's mainly one big piece. That's that's the, the base floor itself. This block here is two parts. This block here is two parts. Uh, this column here is three parts, and this uh, smaller one is also two parts. And then you've got the uh, the snake. So. This is an older kit. Uh, I was expecting a few difficulties putting this together, but thankfully it uh, went together really well. It uh, was really well looked after. Uh, the only main problems that I had with this, uh, this bandage here, uh, it's got like an extra bit of, of plastic that fits, fits into a slot on the thigh. It was basically too long for the hole, so just a regular nail file, sanded that down and then it popped straight in. Uh, the snake was quite tricky, uh, one to paint and two, uh, it has like a, a same again like this bandage, it's got a piece of plastic that fits into a hole on the base but once that wouldn't fit in uh, with the tail on the back step it was, uh, it was a couple of millimetres too short. So what I did there was I got some Abe's epoxy and then just rolled it out uh, and then put the snake back in to make a bigger hole left to dry and then uh, yeah and then just basically uh, once it was repainted and then uh, the sand was added you can't tell uh, this part here was probably the worst part uh, came with a huge thick seam running right down the middle right across the top right down the back it was quite hideous to look at and to say this part was like front facing it would have stood out a mile so what I had to do there was I basically got some Aves epoxy uh, rolled a thin layer of it uh, on all on all sides found it like a regular just a random rock outside that had some interesting uh, jagged edges and then just basically made impressions uh, run the, the rock across uh, and then left to dry and then once dry grey primed and then painted and now it just looks like it's all one one block all one piece so yeah so uh, quite a lot of people have seen pictures of this online have all thought that I've added real sand it's not it's a uh, it's a fake scenic sand basically uh, if you go to any good hobby shop uh, that supplies mainly, I suppose, uh, railway accessories. It, well, the hours have a section where you can buy like scenic grass, scenic trees, and stuff like that. Well, uh, basically, I f at one time I went in there, I found a, a scenic sand. So it's basically that. It's really easy to apply. You just basically put PVA glue on the base where you want the sand to be, put a plate underneath. Uh, Sprinkle on the sand, leave it to dry, get a, a, a gentle brush, uh, sweep off the excess, uh, you get save the excess, put the excess back uh, for another day. Uh, any bald parts, basically just redo it again, PVA glue on that part, sprinkle it on, leave it dry, brush off the excess and you should be good to go. So yeah, that turned out really well. Uh, the mummy, I basically painted that up. Uh, I built what I could. So basically, the torso was built, the head was built, the arms were built separate, the legs were built separate, the bandages were still on the original sheet that they came with. Uh, painted them up uh, like a, from a dark brown to a medium brown. 
uh, and then uh, and then dry brushed like a like a mushroom greyish colour, uh, just to highlight the various bandages. Uh, and then I assembled it all. The reason why I did that was there's quite a lot of uh, little nooks and crannies that I wouldn't have been able to get to to uh, weather uh, with a brush because they're hidden away. So it made sense to paint them separate and then uh, glue the mummy together. I kept this mummy's hand and face a, a different colour. Uh, there's a few build-ups I've seen in the past where people have just kept it all more or less the same colour scheme and you can't tell what is mummy and what is bandage. Uh, so I, I, for me I really wanted to keep uh, keep them separate. Uh, so it's, it, the, they are just basically like a, like a darkish brown uh, with a black wash over it, rubbed off the excess to add all like little... Uh, little uh, in in indentation uh, marks on the face and on the eye and the ears and stuff uh, and then they uh, just dry brushed a lighter brown over the top I kept all the colour schemes very dry so because I, I just wanted it to scream like ancient and old and and rotten uh, and the only part that has got a little bit of uh, like gloss to it to give it a bit of a moisture, a bit of uh, a sheen, is just basically the eyeball itself. Everything else is matte. Uh, the base, I started off with a, just a general sand kind of yellowish colour. Uh, lightened it up uh, as I went. Uh, dry brushed it. Uh, I did a uh, wash uh, to get like a dark brown and blacks into all these little nooks and crannies and all the hieroglyphics etc. Uh, rubbed off the excess uh, and then dry brushed over with a mushroom grey to give it like a like an, like an old stone uh, feel. And then I just painted the hieroglyphics on with uh, watercolours. Uh, the reason why I decided to use watercolour was if I wanted to paint them with uh, acrylic I would probably have had to get some uh, fine fine sandpaper uh, and, and gently rub off uh, the excess but there would have still been patches that would have looked too new or you run the risk of like rubbing off uh, paintwork that you don't want to rub off to show that it was plastic underneath so yeah so just, just general watercolour uh, worked brilliantly because it gives the highlight of colour but it's not too rich to seem like it's new. It looks like it's worn and it's faded. And same again, once that dried, I just got a bit of, of mushroom, a tiny bit of mushroom grey on a uh, fixed, uh, fixed st uh, stickle brush, and then just basically lightly uh, dry brushed over the top to give it a really worn, uh, worn look. Uh, the hardest part of this, believe it or not, was uh, the snake. I, uh, I had to look up a lot of uh, reference photos on Google image searches uh, for uh, like Egyptian uh, cobras and uh, that type of snake and uh, they are very well camouflaged but uh, to desert environments but they also do kind of stand out in a way. Uh, the main thing the, the stand out by is the, the head down from the back is a more darker colour uh, and then the belly is more of a sandy white colour. So what I did there was I give it a unified yellowish sand colour first. Then I uh, added like a like a dark brown wash to highlight all these little individual rivets uh, in his chest, all these little bumps and lumps. Uh, then I added black uh, watercolour to the back, um, sealed that with a varnish. And then uh, went round with a, with a fine detail brush and added loads of little speckle little scales and dots going from the head down to the tail. Uh, and then uh, dry brushed mushroom grey again on the belly and uh, and then just added some blacks around these uh, quill parts. I'm sorry I don't really know what they call them on them snakes but yeah these extra parts on the head there. Uh, yeah, and then uh, and then just varnished it all again with a matte varnish, and uh, yeah, and then kept it like a dry look. Quite a lot of people make the mistake of 
paint and snakes with a varnish, uh, with a gloss varnish, to make them look slippery and wet. But in reality, uh, snakes are actually dry. So with everything else being dry on this, I thought I'd keep that exactly the same. And then I uh, just painted uh, the mummy in black to make it stand out from the from the lighter colours. And then yeah, and that's basically it. Uh, I've posted this online. It's proved quite popular with the fans. Uh, this was a private commission, the guy that I'm painting it for is very happy with it. And uh, and yeah, I've got a few more models actually of his to do. <laughs> more Universal Monsters, uh, Frankenstein and uh, uh, some of the other ones like uh, Wolfman etc and stuff. So yeah, so uh, I'll see if I can zoom in. So yeah, so there you go guys, uh, nothing else to say about this, uh, hope you enjoyed it, uh, please click the like button and share on Facebook and Twitter because it helps new people find my channel which I'm always appreciative of, thank you very much and uh, don't forget to subscribe and uh, don't forget to check out more videos for more model kit builds and statue reviews etc and uh, yeah nothing else to say but thank you for watching and see you next time, thank you very much, goodbye.